The NRA. One more thing about these kids. It's wonderful for them to get involved in the political process. However, the vast majority are doing so with virtually no historical knowledge of the Constitution, specifically Amendment Number 2. They have no historical perspective here, but they do have political heat. Republican lawmakers, including the president, are feeling that heat from these liberal households, and frankly, not too surprisingly, they are all showing signs of buckling to them. But here's the question. What new gun law would have stopped Nicholas Cruz from slaughtering 17 people at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School? Joining me now from Los Angeles, California, CEO and senior partner at Michelle and Associates Law Firm, counsel for the National Rifle Association, and expert on federal firearms law, C.D. Michelle. C.D., White House is now talking about increasing the age to purchase a, a, a AR-15 or um, an assault weapon, uh, I presume. Um, and the president is tweeting about this. I will be strongly pushing comprehensive background checks. That's great. With an emphasis on mental health, great. Raise the age to 21 and end sale of bump stocks. Congress is in a mood to finally do something on this issue, I hope. All right. First of all, bump stocks were not used in this. We know a bump stock was used in Las Vegas. Um, but we also knew, know that you can use a belt to mimic using a, a, a bump stock. But I want to go to the age issue. This is a trap. This is a trap set up by the fascist left, the Democrat Party. Because if this perpetrator had been 21 years old, then what? Then we'd raise the age to 25? It's a loss of liberty. And so what if he doesn't get, if he can't get a gun through a gun store, most people, most of the, the criminals and terrorists who misuse firearms get them on the black market or, or steal them or take them out of their, their parents' gun cabinet. It's not a matter of buying it in a, in a, in a firearm store. And what I suspect what's part of the agenda to push for that raise limit, not by President Trump, but by the anti-gun owner groups, is that they don't want youth to be able to participate in the shooting sports. You're seeing that in multiple areas where they're trying to make it difficult for Boy Scouts or 4-H or any of these groups to get access to the firearms, to borrow, you know, to, for, for parents or ranges to loan those guns to youth so they can get into junior shooting programs and and go hunt and and uh, uh, and learn to shoot uh, at a young age so they enjoy it for the rest of their life. They, they would love to cut off that access because right. it would limit the number of adults that then participate. But it would also inoculate the next generation of Americans uh, from the Second Amendment. <laughs> In other words, render it almost useless. And this is yeah. the thing I can't rationalize, CD. I can't wrap my head around this one. For any rational member of Congress, any elected official, any rational American, to say, yes, let's raise the age to 21 that you can buy a firearm, yet... We say it's okay for a late 17-year-old or an 18-year-old to join the United States military. We send them overseas, and we trust them with these firearms, these same firearms that we're not going to allow them to purchase. This makes no sense. Well, we're actually, when we train them to go into the military, they're using a gun that's actually much uh, different from the the semi-automatic civilian versions of, uh, of of military firearms, the modern modern sporting rifles are semi-automatic. Those military firearms are fully automatic. So in a sense, you're giving that 18 year old who's serving in the military uh, access to and training in use of a firearm that's fully automatic. It's hypocritical to say the least. Now, uh, speaking of trap, um, CNN set up a trap last night. This was essentially a commercial. Uh, against guns, against the Second Amendment. And, uh, millions of Americans watched, unfortunately, and we have some clips from that. Um, I have a senator from Florida. You may recognize him. His name is Marco Rubio, who fell right into the trap. At one moment, I was proud of this guy, and the next moment, I was fully embarrassed. Roll tape. I'm saying that the problems that we're facing here today cannot be solved by gun laws alone. Oh. Guns the factor Absolutely. in the hunting of, of our course kids. They were. And here's it's what the, the weapon here's of choice. We do, Can you say that? I support moving forward on that initiative and making it widely available for everyone around the country. Now, I think what you're asking about is the assault weapons ban. Yes, yes sir. 
So let me be honest with you about that one. If I believed that that law would have prevented this from happening, I would support it. But I want to explain to you why it would not. Se Senator Rubio, my daughter, running down the hallway at Marjorie Stone yes, and Douglas were shot in the back yes, sir. with an assault weapon, the weapon of choice. Yes, sir. Okay? It is too easy to get. It is a weapon of war. The fact that you can't stand with everybody in this building and say that, I'm sorry. Sir, I do believe what you're saying is true. My belief is, my belief remains, that rather than continue to try to chase every loophole that's created, it's why it failed in 94, it's why they're getting around it now in California, it's why how they get around it in New York, is we instead should make sure that dangerous criminals, people that are deranged, cannot buy any gun of any kind. That's what I believe a better answer will be. Okay. okay. Your answer speaks for itself. It does speak for itself if they would listen, if they would use right. reason instead of emotion. We know there was an assault weapons ban on the books, and we know it made no appreciable difference. For 10 years, and even the, uh, the anti-gun uh, uh, folks had to admit that it had no impact. Uh, so that this has been tested and failed. And, you know, the, 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 it's just... At a certain level, 15 million people own ARs, and the reason they own those firearms is because it's such a versatile firearm. It serves so many purposes, and it's it's very easy and straight uh, uh, shoot to shoot. Uh, so the reason, it's not the weapon of choice of criminals. It's the most popular gun in America for everyone. And we, we ignore this substitution effect. If you ban firearm number one, the bad guy is going to use firearm number two. It's like debating whether or not you want to get run over by a Ford or a Chevy. No, you have to stop the person who's who's pulling the trigger. Well, I would also point out that the bad guys in Baltimore and in Chicago still get their hands on the firearms no matter how many layers of gun laws they put down on the residents of those cities. And that's why they're fleeing, by the way, because they're not safe. But I want to go to Colorado. Colorado had a chance to move forward on this. I hope you're familiar with this. It's the post-Columbine uh, shooting, if you will, many, many years later. One of the survivors of Columbine was all for this. And it was a very simple thing. And that is to essentially wipe out gun-free zones in Colorado and allow concealed carry on these campuses, to, these are people who have been vetted, who have licenses, who are trustworthy. They're not criminals. They're not gang members. They are people who have to pass a rigorous background check to carry firearms. Many of them are former uh, law enforcement, yet it went down in flames in Colorado. This proves to me that the fascist left Democrat Party is not all about the Constitution. They're not all about protecting the kids on campuses. They're about having a political wedge issue they think they can use to get reelected. Well, it's not just a wedge issue, it's a control issue. I mean, they, they, they recognize that as long as uh, civilians have firearms, that those civilians are capable of resisting a government that goes too far. And Democrats, they don't want to allow anything that normalizes the concept of gun ownership. They don't want you to be able to carry a firearm outside your home to defend yourself or your family. They don't want you to be able to uh, uh, have a firearm at school because, because what happens in the, in the jurisdictions where they allow people to have those firearms in public is nothing. <laughs> Violent crime goes down. All the predictions of Wild West shootouts in the streets and all this hysteria doesn't come true. And people get used to it. They're not afraid of it. And at that point, the gun ban lobby cannot uh, uh, continue to demonize firearms and firearms owners because people see the truth, they live the truth. And that's what the gun ban lobby is terrified of. The last thing they want anybody to realize is that guns have social utility. Guns deter crime. Guns save lives. And, and these kids, to circle back, are not taught this uh, in school. These kids right now are just parroting what their parents are telling them, and unfortunately what some of the teachers are telling them. Instead well, the, the, of teaching the, these kids that it's okay 
for a boy to dress like a girl and a girl to use a boy's restroom, they ought to be teaching about the United States Constitution, in particular, the Second Amendment. CD, thank you.